It is a beautiful Friday afternoon and I am back in the Montana garage. I have all sorts of stuff to do on that. I have all sorts of stuff to do on that. I have all sorts of stuff to do on that. I even have stuff to do on that. But today is gonna be a little different. Uh, we gotta go back and just take care of some maintenance on the daily. So the old power stroke is having some issues again. So I gotta see if I can fix that up and I thought I'd uh, show you guys what we gotta do. So again, for you regular viewers, this is a little different. I'm not working on any of my regular projects. And if you're new here, if you found this video because you uh, Googled, you know, how to repair the oil leak on my 7.3 Power Stroke, uh, my Ford F-250 has an oil pan, oil leak, something like that. Uh, thanks for coming by. I'm gonna try to show you how to fix that problem today. And then, uh, hey, while you're here, check out some of our other videos. Usually we're working on, you know, some other projects. Uh, but this is kind of an interesting little problem I found on here, and I thought maybe it helps somebody out. So let's uh, go see what we're talking about. So for people that haven't seen the other videos, the O2 Power Stroke with the 7.3 diesel, uh, it's got, I don't know the exact number, but over 420,000 miles on it. So 423,000 or something. And it's been a great truck. I haven't had that many issues with it. But if you can kind of just see from where she sits. One problem I've always had is this thing is always, always leaking oil. Every time I fix an oil leak, I get like two or three days with no oil puddle under the truck, and then boom, there's another one. Um, so I've had several of the high pressure oil lines leaking. I had the oil cooler leak. Uh, as soon as I fixed that, then it started leaking from up by the, uh, you can't see me very good here. It started leaking from up by the, uh, I don't know. I'm not a diesel guy, so I don't know like where the timing cover would be on a regular engine. It took me forever to figure that out. It was a bolt that had backed out of there. Uh, let's see. Then I had another high pressure oil leak in, line leak in. I fixed that. And then again, like a week later, it started leaving a puddle. And it's been gradually getting worse. And I've needed to take care of it. But it gets so oily under there and you can't figure out where it's coming from. And I just, uh, yeah, I have not been very good about maintaining this thing but it's still rolling down the road but the oil leak now has gotten so bad that i i had to do something about it look, look you can see there's oil all over the back of the bumper here the bumper and the tailgate there's oil in the wheel wells so my son's been driving the truck and not me and uh, he told me it was acting up so i figured i better come out and take a peek at it so i crawled under the old truck and i'm not sure the best way to show you guys this uh, here is my like I said, there's this thing has leaked oil for so long in several different ways and places and uh, You know, I'll, I'll figure it out and I'll get it all cleaned up or you know kind of cleaned up There's only so much a guy can do once it's been caked on here for so many years uh, but uh, The newest problem so This is the oil pan obviously we're up probably all kind of upside down This is the dipstick tube coming down, right? And then I didn't know this, but I crawled under here to look around and I see this little thing hanging on here. So the dipstick tube actually threads or, you know, there's a like a locking threaded ring that holds that in place and it has a seal on the inside of it. So that has come completely loose and obviously when it's running, oil just dumps out of there. So I tried to get the nut started back on there and I can't get the uh, piece on the inside. It'll start just like that and then it pops off. I can't get the piece on the inside to come through far enough. And so, you know, I did what anybody else would do. I did a little Google research. Uh, so there's a rubber O-ring on the inside of that uh, assembly there. And over time, that O-ring kind of swells up because of the contact with oil and then it gets almost like too big and so probably what's going on is the o-ring is out of its you know little ring or position it's supposed to be in it's not allowing the inside of that part to poke through the the uh, oil pan far enough for me to get the nut started on it correctly so it seems like a pretty big deal because that's inside of the oil pan i mean how am i gonna take care of that being inside of the oil pan um but again, thanks to the fancy Google machine, I discovered that they make a little kit 
so a guy can fix this uh, without having to take the oil pan off or you know do something drastic as pull the engine out and all that good stuff so we're gonna find out if it works I just realized I got one snag in my little plan I'm gonna keep moving forward uh, there's some stuff I got to do so the starters look kind of in the way where can you see me so we need to uh, disconnect the batteries and I don't know if I got to take the starter out or at least got to disconnect the main the big cable to the starter so that gives me more access to what I got to do there uh, I just realized that the part I bought is in my other truck and it just went bye bye with uh, my son to town so hopefully he's gonna be back here pretty soon uh, I'm gonna go ahead like I said keep moving and then we may or may not be able to continue with this project we might have to start again tomorrow but we'll see what happens all right I went ahead and changed sweatshirts my tri5 mob sweatshirt I was wearing uh, it is my kind of my working in the shop sweatshirt so I'm not worried about getting it a little dirty but uh, I just showed you how oil it is under there and I don't want to totally destroy it so this uh, this is kind of my more ready to be destroyed sweatshirt uh, go abs by the way all right so first thing we need to do is disconnect this battery hopefully this is yeah I've replaced uh, this negative cable here so it's got a little different end on it than all the other ones so needed a half inch to disconnect that guy now these things obviously have uh, two batteries in case you didn't know that I don't know where you can see that all right so that was not as easy as it should have been but we got the battery disconnected so now crawl underneath and uh, play around in the uh, oil and the dirt and try to take the starter off or we'll look at it I know I at least got to get the starter uh, the cable out of the way all right so upside down here's the I don't know if you guys can see any of this there's the big cable for the starter and it goes right next to the oil pan where this whole assembly is um, I think it's gonna be just as easy to take the two bolts of the starter loose and just kind of move the starter and try to kind of hang it out of the way over here rather than fight with trying to get the little bolts off the you know the solenoid or whatever yeah I think that's what I'll do is I'll just try to move the starter and yeah I think that's Trey getting back with my other truck so I'll be able to show you guys the part that I'm gonna replace it with here in a second too all right, bring you back for a little update here. I decided to go ahead and just take the starter off. Um, I tried to just take it off and like leave it hanging down or jam it over into the frame here, but there was just, you know, no real good way to get out of the way. Once it's loose, I mean, it's two bolts on the wires, you know, to get it out of there. So I got rid of that. So now we got a little more room to work and uh, show you more of what we're doing here. So. This is the dipstick, comes in and then there's a nut holding this piece here and it's got an o-ring on the inside. This nut was completely loose. Now I got it kind of jammed on there and just barely started. Uh, what happens is I try to tighten that with a big pair of channel locks. It turns like just barely a little bit more and then it just, it just comes back loose. So that's how I was tightening it. But uh, I can't get it to go I can't get it to actually grab enough threads to get tight and I think that's because the o-ring is misplaced on there you know in the wrong position on the inside because those o-rings swell so once we get this out of there I should be able to show you the o-ring based on my research should be you know a little bit bigger than the new o-ring now the problem I'm gonna have or the thing I got to be really careful with is up top there's a nut that's holding the dipstick tube kind of to the engine block so we got to we got to take that off and then the dipstick tube will pull out of this piece here the thing I'm gonna have to have some help because means this ring isn't super tight the way this is supposed to work you leave this tight you pull the ring out and then there's a little piece we're gonna put in here that holds this in place because if this drops down into the oil pan game over um, we got you can't get it back out of there, you know, without taking the oil pan off. And I don't know what you got to do to take oil pan off if you can do it in, in the truck like this or not. Um, so 
beans i don't have this super tight or i can't get it super tight i got to be super careful and i'm a little nervous about dropping that in the engine so uh, i'm gonna have to have some help here to pull the dipstick out while i hold it in place and uh let me clean my hands off and we'll go get the new part and i'll show you uh, the the little kit that holds it in place and what we're going to do all right so this is what i'm working with here it's dorman part number 904-423 dipstick flange kit uh like i said i just Googled this problem I'm having on YouTube, and this is the solution I came up with. Uh, so they had this at O'Reilly's. I'm not sure why there's. Looks like one, two, three, four, five different O rings. Uh, I'll have to look at them and see if they're all the same. They all kind of look the same, but there might be little different sizes. And then there's the little O ring where the dipstick tube fits into. And then. Uh, so this is the little ingenious tool that once I pull the dipstick out of that piece, then this goes back into that piece on the inside and it's got a little clip, you know, that clips in there and that, uh, that piece that's on the inside of the engine, the inside of the uh, oil pan clips onto there and then you can hang it, you know, on the edge of the oil pan and then you fish around in the little hole there to get the old o-ring out and the new o-ring in so it's kind of a neat little pretty cool little tool that keeps that you know the inside piece held in position so you can do what you got to do now well, hopefully i'm going to be able to make work and uh, actually do what i got to do unfortunately like i said i need some help i think uh trey's probably busy he's getting ready for a hockey game so this might be where this ends today this might have to get finished tomorrow just because i just don't want to pull that thing out of there without you know, someone down there to hold it in position. It's not worth, uh, even though it seems like it's it's kind of held in position by the nut right now, I know that it's barely hanging on by a thread and to me it's not worth the risk of dropping it in there. So I'm gonna see if I can get some help real quick. Uh, if he's already uh, getting all ready to go and stuff, we're gonna have to come back tomorrow. Uh, one other thing about this little project we're working on here today, I think yeah, in the beginning I said that, you know, Trey's been driving the truck and he came out or he called me and said, you know, hey, Dad, the truck's acting up. He said it was kind of acting like it was uh, when the injectors quit working. That was running really rough. And uh, so he he started it. It ran, idled really funny, wouldn't really run. He shut it off. It was a little cold out. You know, it was 30 degrees or something. And these dang power strokes, if it's cold like that, they don't. My initial thought was, well, you probably just didn't let it warm up, you know. He said, no, I shut it back off, and then it started, and I let it warm up for about 10 minutes, and it wouldn't even hardly back out of the driveway. It just didn't have any power, he said. So I pulled it back in, and I left in the other truck. Uh, so I came out, or came home and looked at it later, and uh, first thing I noticed was just oil, like in the wheel wells and on the back bumper more than it's been. And um, So like I said, it's been leaking oil forever, but I could just tell, right, that like the oil leak's gotten worse. I checked the oil. There was no oil on the dipstick. I actually put like five quarts of oil on it and barely got oil to the dipstick. So uh, I assume what's happening is what I've read is that uh, the injectors need that high pressure oil to fire. And uh, once the injectors run out of oil, they don't work. Your truck won't run. So it kind of it's kind of like a little I don't know if it's designed to be like a little safety. I'm sure it's not good to run your truck uh, four or five quarts of oil low, uh, but I've been told that the truck, before it gets low enough to really do any damage, the truck won't run because the injectors quit firing. So I'm kind of assuming, assuming uh, that that's what's wrong. I, like I said, I put oil in it uh, and then that's, and then I started it and it ran. It seemed like it, it idled fine. It took a while to start and I think that could have been a little bit of air in the lines or something for the injectors to fire. Uh, but then it started right up and it idled fine. I didn't drive anywhere and I crawled underneath and looked and that's when I saw the oil pouring out of the damn oil pan. Um, so that's where we're at on that. I assume, I hope there's no real engine damage, you know, uh, but uh, I've been told that the, it's kind of a little oil safety thing there in the uh, the 73 power stroke. So that's kind of cool. Okay, I'm back and it is the next day, but I still don't have any help. So I'm gonna try to figure this out on my own here. Um, so another thing you have to do so we got to remove this dipstick tube. I already took the dipstick itself out of here. Got it laying uh, right here. Now there's a little uh, nut on a little 
shaft here that holds that in place and a little uh, clip here holding some wiring. Both of those I've already removed. So now back underneath, like I said, I was hoping to have some help so I could hold on to this, but I think I can kind of hold it on my own. And plus, what I did is, is uh, threw a vice grip on there. So that's the vice grip is holding the piece that I obviously don't want to fall into the engine. Now it's time to see if we can get this dipstick tube pulled out of here. I've never done this before, so hopefully it just slides right out and I don't have to mess with it a whole bunch. Let's see, where's my little... So I need to get the dipstick tube out and then put this thing in and not allow that to fall in the oil pan in the meantime. So here goes, I guess. Feels like that's on there fairly well. Well, it doesn't seem like it wants to just pull right out. Huh? Definitely came loose that time. I just want to make sure I got a hold of it. The vice grips, it seems like I do. Alright, so that guy's out of there. That's in there. Feels like it clipped into place. Carefully release the vice grips. Still don't know if I trust it, but seems like it's on there. So the plastic thing's holding it in place now. Get the lock ring out of the way. All right, now I gotta reposition and try to figure out. <sighs> ah. All right, so there's the O-ring on there. So we gotta fish that O-ring off of there. I've got a little hooky tool here somewhere. I can reach it. Man, it's just kind of awkward to work down here, that's for sure. So, I'm going to let this go. So, one I took out, one I'm putting in. So, I assume that's why I couldn't get it tight on there again, is this O-ring had slipped out. And, uh, couldn't get it in the groove, and it wouldn't allow this piece to go back in the hole how it's supposed to. Now, the tricky part, I'm assuming, is going to get this getting this new o-ring on here and again I can't allow that piece to fall off of there because then we're kind of then we're kind of done son all right trying to get the camera spot where you can still see and I can see a little bit so I got the new o-ring on here I just 
I don't know how the heck I can just can't see anything basically so scared that that's gonna come off of there and go inside the oil pan all right so o-ring is inside the oil pan Assuming I'm supposed to be able to get it. Oh. In a little groove. Oh boy, I just felt that white thing pop up a little bit. Feels like I got it started. It looked like the O-ring was in its little position, hopefully, right? Now another thing it says is very important to not over tighten this because you can distort the inside of it and then it'll never seal correctly. Let's see now, it just did the same thing it was doing before where it starts and then it pops off as soon as I say, try to tighten it. Now, there is two positions for that, so hopefully I have it in the right one. All right, so of course, I think I got that wrong. So there's two little notches here. Again, I can't see what I'm showing you on the camera because I can't see everything at the same time. Um, so these notches allow this to be oriented in a different position. And when I go back and look at the film, it looks like this needs to be forward more. So I think I must be in the top and the bottom one must go up there, which is gonna cock that forward. So before I take the white thing out of there, Got to loosen it up again and try again. Tighten or just pop loose again. That feels like we're doing something. Just not a lot of room down here to do anything. Oh, see it? See she? I don't know if the threads are screwed up on this thing or what, but it. Looks like it wants to tighten and then, boom, comes loose. Try to clean this off a little bit. So it looks like the threads are screwed up a little bit on this thing. Just a little wiggle in them, kind of like. Clean them off real good. See if that's enough to make them grab how they're supposed to.
So yeah, it grabs, it gets to a certain point, and I can't turn it by hand anymore. Maybe this time? It just got loose again. Yep. All right, we gotta figure out a different plan. Well, unfortunately, it looks like that retaining ring, I just can't get it to tighten. There's just one little tiny wiggle in the threads. There's only like two threads on that thing. And uh, there's one spot where it just kind of wiggles a little bit. It's probably where it was rattling around when it was loose. Uh, I'm not gonna take it back off there and I'll show you because I got it kind of jammed in there and I don't want that inside piece to fall in the oil pan, obviously. So uh, I guess we'll have to take a break on this project here. I assume I probably gotta get that little nut from Ford. I can call around a little bit, but I'm guessing that's gonna be a Ford product. Um, hopefully I can get it from them. The, the threads on the piece that goes on the inside of the oil pan, those look fine. So hopefully a new retaining nut and we'll be able to put this back together uh, so we'll come back when we get that happening oh and of course it's saturday afternoon so ford's parts is closed and uh gotta work monday so who knows when this is gonna get done we are back for uh day three of trying to fix the power stroke I uh, just got off work and I stopped at Ford on the way home and grabbed a new one of these little dipstick retainer nuts. One little nut. Uh, how much do you think it cost? Nope. Guess again. More than that. Yep. Yep. More than that. No, I don't know. I guess they don't give anything away anymore, but it was 25 bucks. 25 bucks. Um, I guess that's not too much worse than the 33 bucks it was for a couple little O-rings. Um, so... Pretty simple fix. Uh, hopefully this is gonna uh, fix it. Um, but 33, 43, 53, like almost 60 bucks to reseal this little oil pan thing. So let me get my sweatshirt switched back to oily sweatshirt and we'll crawl under the truck, see if this bad boy's gonna tighten up. All right, it's a little darker under here. Uh, got my helper, Moose, coming to check me out. Uh, but I got a light up here, see if I can figure out where I was setting this at and still having room to work. And hoping you guys could see something where we left off. I couldn't get this nut to tighten. So I still got my little holder inner thing in there. I guess it was loose completely. The more I mess with this, the more I'm going to have a chance to screw it up and drop that in the oil pan probably. But uh, So hopefully it's as easy as... Putting this new one on here, tightening it up. <clears throat> Doesn't feel a lot different so far, it barely turns and stops. Get grabbed in now. All right. Whew. Worried it was going to do the same thing. Now, they did. I saw a thing about being sure not to over tighten this. I don't know, I guess, how tight it's supposed to be. So, I won't really wrench on it, but I'll get it pretty tight. Probably good. I'm going to try to get one more little. There we go. All right. 
So, that's tight. Now, this little plastic guy had a couple little kind of retaining flanges on the end of it. Oh, look at there, you just pull her back out. So these little clips held in there. There's a couple times it felt like it was gonna pull out, so. Anyways, we got her replaced. Now, there is an o-ring on the bottom of the dipstick tube here as well. Right there, see that pull off of there? So take that off, let me go grab a rag and some cleaner and a new uh, o-ring. I'll replace that too, because it was in the kit. Might as well, right? You guys can just wait there. All right, back with the new o-ring. Some brick clean. All right, now what are the odds of getting this? Yeah, well, that was pretty easy. Better go up top and make sure uh, or somewhere as close to where it's supposed to be. There's a little stud up there where it rides on. All right, of course it's nowhere where it's supposed to be up here. Let's pop it back out. All right, so I put the little bracket on the stud and started the nut just to kind of hold it in place so I know where it's gotta be. And it looks like it just popped out a little bit, so hopefully you can just pop this back in. Of course it doesn't wanna go in now. There we go. I'm not gonna go crazy, but I'm just gonna clean up around this fitting so I can make sure it's not leaking again. So I already did it, but I uh, can't remember what I showed you when I took this apart, but there's a little Nut right there. Now you can good you can see down there, but uh, and that's what's holding the dipstick in place. And then there's a little retainer to hold some wiring to it. And then also I guess well let's see I kind of buggered that up didn't I? Let's get this out of here. Looks like this is probably supposed to go on this side. And then there's a little snap ring that just holds those wires to it. All right, so that's the uh, dipstick retainer repair. I still have to put the starter back in and hook the batteries back up, and I'm gonna do an oil change while I'm doing this too, but we won't need to bother showing you guys all that. I might put you up, set you up for some fast motion so you can watch me struggle putting the starter back in. Uh, and then we'll come back and uh, start her up and make sure it doesn't leak. Uh, might as well clean her up a little bit while I got it out. So I broke out the old uh, cake froster from the 70s slash parts cleaner. We'll just get some of this crap off here, wipe it down. That way I won't have to get quite as filthy next time I mess with it. you guys can see something that's going on we'll probably put you in fast motion and you can just watch me struggle
All right, there we have it. Starters back in. Dipstick retainer nut, or whatever it's called, is back on and tight. Uh, let's go hook up the battery, fire this old thing up, and see if she leaks. All right, both batteries are hooked back up. Hopefully the keys are in here. It's a little chilly out, and this is a 7.3 power stroke, so it probably won't want to start. Now it's, I don't know, it's probably 40 degrees. It should start without too much trouble. <laughs> should. Try again. Sure, I'm still low on oil, but I did add enough oil to where there's oil on the dipstick. All right, so there we go. That's the uh I still don't know what this is called. The uh, 7.3 diesel dipstick retainer nut repair. How's that? Uh, would have been a little smoother if the, the nut wouldn't have been messed up. I don't know if I ever tried to show you guys or if you can even be able to see it, but the threads are just a little goofed up. At one little spot. Where are they at? Like right? No, I can't even see it now. Right there. Right at the tip of my thumb. The threads just kind of wiggle a little bit, and I don't know if you can even see it. And that just... I tried 8 million thousand times to get that nut to tighten on there, and it just wouldn't tighten. The new one... Did the same thing at first, but on attempt number two, it tightened up. And we're back one last time to check in. As you can see, it got dark on me. I got the oil changed. I got my mess all cleaned up and I went for a little cruisy cruise and uh, all good, no oil leaks. So the uh, dipstick retainer nut seal interface, whatever that's all called on the oil pan there, it's all sealed back up and it's not leaking anymore. Uh, I ran into town for a little bit, let it idle, came out, and I didn't have any oil at all under the truck, and then I crawled up and looked at that spot, and there was, you know, nothing coming out of there. So, uh, this thing's been leaking like a sieve, and I don't know if it was just from that, because I was too lazy to check it out before. I'm hoping that's what it was, and, uh, we're gonna be good now. Uh, chances are it's probably still leaking somewhere else, but I got this problem taken care of, and the old power stroke, she's back on the road, so that's good, because I need it for work, so. Uh, I was really glad that I found this little part or this little kit with this little uh, J-hook thingamabobby doohickey that holds that internal uh, piece inside of the oil pan in place so you can fix this. Because when I first uh, saw how it was leaking and did a little research, the first things I found were talking about having to remove your oil pan to fix this problem. And uh, that was not something I wanted to do. So. Uh, hopefully if you're having this problem, you can find that uh, part two and it just makes it a lot simpler. It, you know, it's like 33 bucks. You could, a guy could probably find something else you could fight. You know, I probably had something in the shop here that I could have stuck in there and jammed it and held it in place. But um, to me, the risk of dropping it down in the oil pan was worth uh, spending the 30 some bucks on, on a designed part that I, you know, was a little more confident was going to hold it in place. So uh, anyways, I hope you found this video helpful if you're having the same problem. And uh, thanks for watching. While you're here, maybe check out some of my other videos. Like I said, usually we're working on, you know, hot rods. I'm in the middle of a restoration of 55 Chevy here. I got a 57 sedan delivery. Make you guys dizzy. I got a, another 57 Chevy out here in the driveway. And then I got a 69 Chevelle over there in the shop or the house garage. So uh, check it out. We got lots of stuff going on on the channel. We're always working on that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll bring you guys along. You know, when I have to fix things like this too, I figure uh, 
might help somebody out. So appreciate you watching. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. If you got any questions about uh, this part or how I fix this, uh, just uh, let me know down below and I'll try to help you out.